The S locks up. Since I just marked one, we'll take our bandsaw, cut them off. All right, today we are going to work on um, showing you how to build a sheet metal transition in the field. There's lots of ways to do this. This is just what I've found out to be the easiest way for me to do it in the field and hope that it helps you along the way. This is a pretty common scenario. You could envision this plenum to be either a plenum, it could be a, an evaporator coil, but let's say we have to transition from a furnace to this coil. So what we want to start out with is putting S-locks or S-strips around the whole thing. What we want to do is just measure our transition or our plenum which is about 19 and a half it looks like and so I'm gonna mark out our S lock so we can cut I've got the two S locks together and I'll use my bandsaw to cut them which makes it a little bit easier I'm going to uh, take a quarter inch off of each side so I'll mark the S lock at 19 as a since our measurement was 19 and a half then we just want to line the S locks up. Since I just marked one, we'll take our bandsaw, cut them off. Confirm that uh, the other dimensions. This side's 20, so we're going to cut our S locks at 19 and a half. We just line up the ends, take our bands off the mark, and cut them off. Um, if you look closely, these are formed like an S. And what I always do is I put the part on the outside, the S lock on the outside. Wrong side. These go in the front and the back. But by putting them on the outside, it, it makes it easier to slide metal in, as opposed if they're in the inside, you can't work them into the one inch gap there. Probably a good stopping point. All right, so we've gone ahead and prepped the plenum and also prepped our S-locks that we'll put on the furnace and just thought we'd show you how we do that real quick. Once again, we make sure that the S is pointed towards the outside. You want to get it started and then just tap it down into place. Center it if need be. And then we just repeat that step with each, each side. So the next step, we want to measure our height. Um, what I like to do is go from the inside of the S-lock to the inside of the S-lock. So we've got 15 inches here, and then we'll add an inch each way so our height will need to be 17 inches and then you also want to go from the farthest point to and kind of eyeball the farthest point on this side we're going to call that 20 and a half and we want to make sure we have an inch on both sides so we're going to need to cut our piece 17 by 22 and a half so we are going to prep our metal here we uh actually have this piece the is 22 and a half which works for the the width that we need so uh we're just going to go ahead and mark out a 17 and a quarter and we'll go ahead and cut that off So, and on these, I like to uh, 
take the line off so you want to kind of remember where you marked as far as what side of your shears you go on. Um, so if you see, I'm starting on the inside of the line there, and I'm gonna take, take the line with me as I'm cutting. So we got our piece of metal prepped. What I didn't say last time is you always want to start with the hardest piece to get to. And for me, that's typically the back. So we, we prep this piece for the back. And what I do at this point is I will slide it in to one of the S locks. So I'm, in this case, I'm gonna slide it into the bottom, make sure that we're overhanging an inch on both sides where our folds will end up being. So that puts your piece of metal in place. You wanna make sure it's down all the way. And then we will mark our corners where the S locks hit. So we're just gonna put a little mark on all four sides. Yep, so as you see, we want to put our marker right about where it's gonna hit this S-lock and put a mark and do the same on the top on all four sides. And that will give us our exact transition. All right, so then we want to take a spare S-lock. We line up the inside of it with our marks and then we mark the opposite side that adds an inch so that we're able to fold it and it will end up exactly where that is. It, it often doesn't hurt to mark the one inch on the top and bottom as well. So that'll tell us where it fits in the upper S locks um, that will trim off eventually. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this side as well, where we put it on our marks, and then mark the outside, which uh, these are another set, they're often called Andy's snips. So we'll use these this time instead of the shears. Just go ahead and trim off at our, at our line that we made. Then we also need to notch our corners, and this is where the top and bottoms come in handy, or, or marking the S-lock on the top and bottom. So you just wanna go maybe a quarter inch past your line so that you're not cutting just a straight line, you've got a little bit of an angle on it. Just notch out your corners. Gonna do that on all four sides. We are going to take our folding bar. This has a, a one inch fold on one side and a half inch on the other. We want to use the one inch fold. Make sure it's seated well. It's often easier on a flat surface. You take fold while pressing down and work it a couple times to make sure you have a nice crisp bend. Then we do the same on the other side. And that is our transition piece that will now move and slide back in. It should be cut perfectly. All right, it's also easy, makes it a little bit easier if you take a screwdriver, open your S-locks a little bit on the sides that you're gonna slide your metal into. You wanna start at one side, slide it into place. So that will be our first. And it's important to note how I fold 
both of my back corners so that when we're sliding a piece in the side, we can slide back into this fold. It just kind of makes it easier. So on my, my piece in the back, I always fold two sides to make it uh, easier when we're sliding our sides in. So we've went ahead and prepped our other sides. If you'll notice, we, we did not fold an extra inch. We have some S-locks on our back. And so we're gonna go ahead and slide this in. Get the top and bottom started. And get close to where the, the S-lock is in the back. And then if we take it and actually bring it off, and have it start on this piece sort of like that. Put your hand on the back to hold and you can slide them together easily. On this side, since we pre-prepped them, we didn't show, but uh, before you mark it, you wanna go ahead and pre-fold these sides so it makes it easier to mark because we have a little offset on this side. But we're gonna do the same thing where we slide this in, get our S-lock started on the bottom, or it could be the top, whichever, and go ahead and slide it all together. So we went ahead and prepped our last piece here. You'll see it's important to, to finish in a place that is easy. In this scenario, it ended up being the front. Sometimes it could be a side. So this piece and the last piece tends to be a little bit trickier. So we're gonna start on one side and get our top started as well as one of the sides. I guess before I do that, you'll notice I took the S-lock off the bottom because you can't really slide things in well. So I'm gonna start on the side, start working it up into place and do the same on the other side and then what we want to do is take our s-lock for the bottom and we're actually going to pull this out and slide it in as our final step there we go and so then Everything would obviously be screwed together in the field, mastic the seams, make sure everything's tight with your hammer. That's how we make a transition in the field.